Hey guys and welcome back to Hoosier Hardware and today we're going to take a look at a roadmap that was put together a few days ago and thrown up on Twitter and this roadmap is for AMD's upcoming CPUs and it should give consumers a good idea of what to expect in the not distant future from AMD which may help you plan your next build especially if you're looking for that DDR5 support you're looking at whether or not you should get a CPU now on AM4 or whether you should delay and wait for AM5 motherboards and those CPUs to come out. So we're going to digest this chart right after a word from today's video sponsor, and that is the coldest water put inside of the coldest water bottle. So if you're in the market for a water bottle and you're looking for a premium water bottle that has a great finish on it, lots of color options, lots of size options, then this is the water bottle for you. There is a rolling giveaway in the description down below as well as a discount code for 10% off on your order. Once again, that's the coldest water and you can see the links in the description down below for more information. So in front of me, I have a few boxes of CPUs that I've collected over the years of AMD releases here. We have a 5950X. This thing is living in my main system behind me. I have a 5600X. This thing lives on the test bench right now. And then I have a 59 or rather a 39 rather 50X. And uh, this CPU used to be in my main system until this past week. And it just occurs to me now that this is a much more premium box than the newer boxes. AMD always does this. Their first gen Zen boxes were nice thick cardboard and then they got this flimsy stuff and then their original Ryzen 9 boxes were these really thick nice boxes and I, di I digress, but you know, uh, AMD's boxing game needs to get better. Now throughout the Zen lifetime, the mainstream Zen architecture from Zen to Zen Plus to Zen 2 to Zen 3, those CPUs all live on the AM4 socket. Now that doesn't mean that they are universally compatible across all AM4 motherboards, which they are absolutely not. However, the socket has not changed, but that is going to change in the not distant future because AM5 is on its way down the road and with it likely DDR5 support. So this leaked roadmap actually gives us a little bit of insight as to when that update is coming and when AM4 is gonna be finally phased out. As a complete side note, when the original Zen architecture was launched, AMD gave us some big promises about its longevity. And at this point here in 2021, AMD has exceeded its longevity uh, promise with AM4. So good job AMD with sticking to one socket and also keeping compatibility across several generations in many cases. So uh, good job AMD, that's actually kind of refreshing. So as we take a look at this chart, we're kind of keeping an eye on that top row starting over there with Summit Ridge, then Pinnacle Ridge, Matisse, and on down the line. And what I'm really eyeing here is starting with Warhol, which is the Zen 3 Plus architecture. It's a nice little refinement on Zen 3. It gives us just a very tiny shrink on the node down to six nanometer, at least that's the projection here. And importantly, it is likely still going to be on AM4. So if you have a 500 series motherboard, you should be good to go with that motherboard likely with just a BIOS update to keep compatibility with future Ryzen 6000 CPUs. But on the other hand, if you're on a 400 series motherboard, the jury's still out on this, but I would not be surprised whatsoever if you can't use Ryzen 6000 CPUs on those 400 series motherboards. And the reason it wouldn't surprise me isn't because there should be some sort of hard roadblock there. It's because with the Ryzen 5000 series, it looked like AMD was going to just drop support for the 400 series motherboards until there was a lot of backlash from the community. So that may be another fight that the uh, AMD community is going to have to have with the company itself. That has yet to be seen, however, since these aren't actually even announced yet. And as far as I know, they're just not in the wild whatsoever. So uh, we will wait eagerly for news on that front in the future. However, based on this chart, Warhol is the end of the line for AM4, and that would seem to make a lot of sense. First of all, AMD has no reason to rush out Zen 4 as its new architecture in the near future because AMD is already ahead of Intel, even with Intel's latest and greatest on the mainstream side of things. In fact, I just watched a Linus Tech Tips video where the 5950X, for the most part, is still faster in gaming than the 11900K, which is Intel's most recent offering. And AMD's sort of put themselves in this position where they are like Intel was several years ago, where there's really no reason for them to hurry up and try to rush something new 
new out because the competition hasn't even caught up to them in the first place. Regardless, it does look like we'll probably see these Warhol CPUs by the end of 2021 on the mainstream platform for AMD. And then moving off into 2022, that's when we're going to start to see the new cycle speed up with the leaks of Zen 4 and AM5 and that sort of thing. But for 2021, it looks like AM4 is still gonna be the mainstream platform that AMD is rolling with. And frankly, that's just fine. But where it really gets exciting is when we move on to Raphael. And that's where we see AM5, that's where we see DDR5 support. And interestingly, that's also where we see, at least it looks like, these mainstream CPUs getting integrated graphics for the first time. Now, AMD has always had some Zen-based APUs, which are usually featuring lower core counts than the mainstream CPUs, but on the other hand, they also do have integrated graphics, and actually usually fairly robust integrated graphics, at least as far as IGPs go. And those uh, APUs have allowed gamers to get up and rolling with an APU without the need for a dedicated GPU. Then you can always drop in a dedicated GPU later on. But it looks like these CPUs, the Raphael CPUs on AM5 with DDR5 support, it looks like they're going to have some form of RDNA 2 graphics on board as well. Now I have no idea if this is a response to the current shortage of any dedicated graphics cards, which is likely preventing some people from going with Ryzen right now because you can't find a reasonably priced GPU. And with mainstream Ryzen, you have to have a GPU of some kind to run as a desktop computer. Whereas with Intel CPUs, unless you're talking about like the F SKUs, they have at least a weak IGP on board, at least something to get you up and running and maybe playing some retro games or maybe some really easy to run games. Whereas AMD, you have to have a GPU. You cannot run the system without putting in a dedicated GPU. And I don't know if this is AMD's response to that, but it is convenient that there will be some sort of IGP on board. The other big notes here are that first and foremost, we have a five nanometer process, at least again, that's the rumor right now. And we also are possibly going to see PCIe 5, though that one I'd be a little bit more apprehensive about just because it seems like a lot to throw into one upgrade. And if Intel hasn't caught up to AMD, I don't know if AMD is going to be really overly enthusiastic about rushing something just completely amazing out the door, knowing that they can do more of an incremental upgrade. And then if Intel does respond, they have something in reserve to respond to Intel. By the way, that is not a pro-consumer outlook on things. But the other side to that is I don't really know if there's going to be a need for PCIe 5 by then. And I, it just seems like a little bit soon to be rushing out PCIe 5 when PCIe 4 just hit and it's just now getting used and it's just now being taken advantage of. So the PCIe 5, eh, maybe, maybe not. I'm not exactly holding my breath for that support. And the last thing I wanna make note of here is the APUs on this chart, the Ram Grant APUs. I was really hoping that AMD would be able to get out something on the AM4 platform that had RDNA 2 graphics. And if this chart is to be believed, that is not going to be the case as the Ram Grant APUs, which are the first ones to feature those RDNA 2 graphics, those are coming out on the AM5 platform, uh, again, at least if this chart is to be believed. So if you were holding out for an APU with RDNA graphics for AM4, it doesn't look like that's promising, but that's just the way the chart reads right now. Obviously, roadmaps are completely up for interpretation as far as will they actually come to pass. Obviously, Intel for the longest time had 10 nanometer on its roadmap, and that just kept getting pushed back. So this is by no means something that is set in stone. This will likely change between now and when all of these future CPUs are finally released. But with that said, I want to hear your guys' thoughts. What do you think of AMD's roadmap here? Is it a good one? Is it a bad one? What would you change if you were AMD? Let me know all your thoughts in those comments down below. If you like this video, give it a like, share, subscribe. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Hoosier Hardware. And as always, I'll let YouTube queue up a couple more videos from my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware, and I'll see you guys in the next video.